ex Skeeter doing their thing, and Zell too. And it's like the amount of plays that like that like that like our songs would get on SoundCloud just overpowered anything mainstream. The labels had to pay attention. And then what began to happen is like you know, like X. Oh my God, Ronnie. Hey Ronnie, what's going on? What's up, bro? How's it going, man? What are you up to? Uh, about to shower and then go to dinner. So. Yeah? Did you just get back from the studio or? Nah, I just got back from the gym. Okay, sick, sick, sick. Yeah, that's great, man. Um, yeah, I'm like excited to interview you because I've like always been listening to your music, but it was based on the fact of your tag. Like I thought the branding on your tag was just done so well. Um, just you can like remember it so easily, right? But then, uh, yeah, I just like respect so much what you've done, man, with the Florida scene. So excited to do this, you know? Let's do it. Yeah. So, well, I actually thought you were only a producer. And then just recently, um, obviously on your album, there's like a couple solo tracks. But then um, you just dropped Star, right? Yeah, I just dropped Star maybe like, what, like a month ago? Exactly. Yeah. yeah with, with the video. And I thought that was pretty sick. Like, it was really spacey in a way and not what I expect from a Florida artist. It was like different than what you would usually hear. So... Um, so from the music video, I got the idea from the song Sexual Seduction from Snoop Dogg. Mm, okay. Is it an old song? Um, you know that song is like Sexual Seduction, Duction, Bruh, like I'm, Snoop Dogg? Yeah, I'm 19, man. I, don't, I didn't listen to Snoop Dogg. Oh, before. shit, you're 19? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, bro. Um, I mean, it's not like super, super old, but it was like maybe like 2007, something like that. Okay, yeah, okay. Hmm. Yeah, um, but basically, it's a Snoop Dogg song, and the music video was kind of like it had like uh, like sixty vibes. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like very like like disc, like vintage disco kind of yeah yeah like disco VHS type vibes. Yeah. So like you know, obviously, I was like really inspired by that for uh, for the music video, and it just made sense because you know I was talking about like star, like you know like space spacey stuff. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, why did you uh make it so different from like what the original florida sound is i feel like that just happened naturally you know it wasn't really like i was targeting to like to make it sound different from like what i'm around you know mm. but it's also like i'm from new jersey so i'm not even from here so oh yeah you're not even from florida okay yeah yeah no i'm not i'm not from miami at all mm. okay interesting yeah i want to get back to uh, your solo music but um, I know every interviewer asks this, but people just got to know about the upbringing, obviously. So yeah. tell me like a bit about where you grew up. I did, I thought you grew up in, in Florida, but yeah. Yeah, nah, so um, I was born and raised in New Jersey. Um, I grew up in a small town called Woodbury, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. It's like two miles wide, two miles long, really small town. And, um, you know, I don't really come from much, you know, like I'm, I always like moved around a lot. My mom was like, you know, in housing assistance my whole life, basically you know, up until like recently. Um, and yeah, like, you know, my, my upbringing was just like a bunch of moving, you know, sleeping in different places. Like, you know, it wasn't, honestly, I had a, I had a, I had, a, I had a, like a really great upbringing, but like, we just weren't financially stable, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there was like a lot of struggling, but I had a great time. Like, I, I can't complain, you know, I think, you know, all the struggling like made me who I am today. Yeah. So. What did you go to school for? Um, yeah, so like when I first went to school, I was going for um, criminal justice at okay. the time. Yeah. Um, you know, I was just really into like, you know, the whole like, I used to watch like a lot of Criminal Minds, you know? So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you, did you watch Cops at all? Um, yeah, I used to watch Cops like when I was like younger, but mm. you know, as I got older, I was just watching like, a lot of like Criminal Minds like all the time, you know, it was just like always on yeah. and like a bunch of like detective stuff and like, my mind just like I'm such like a thinker, you know. Like my mind's my mind's always like racing and just like thinking of like all possibilities in every situation. So like I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna go to school for that. You know, I don't want to be a bum or a loser. So <laughs> um, yeah, but like you know, when I was doing that, I just wasn't really too happy with it, you know. So that you know that me going to school for criminal justice, it, that like it didn't it didn't last, as you can see. <laughs> mm. How yeah. many uh, how many years in did you did you decide that it wasn't for you? Um, really after, after the first semester. <laughs> oh, no way. That's so early, dude. Yeah. 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 So like, would, cause were you already doing music and then you're like, all right, man, this music stuff is like way cooler. I got to switch. Or like, did you drop, uh, did you drop out and then like have a break and then do music? 
Yeah, it was kind of like, um, it was kind of like, you know, like out of high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. But all my friends, they were going to school to play sports and like really big like D1 schools. And like, I was going to Miami, you know, to go to like a, a smaller college, like D2, like HBCU. And um, yeah, bro, like at the time I wasn't, I wasn't making music, you know, and during the first semester that I was there, one of my homies, Gilbert Charlie, he was making beats back in like, like the tri-state area, like back home, he was making yeah. like a bunch of noise. You're talking about Charlie so, Heat? Yeah, Charlie Heat. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. or Texas, okay. Yeah, like we grew up together, whatever. So, you know, he's he's basically the one that like really truly inspired me to like want to start making beats. And um, yeah, so like I stayed in Miami for one semester. I went back to, to New Jersey for one semester. And that was like when I really started like, like really like diving in on a whole like production tip. And then I came back to Miami and then that's when I just like stayed. Did, uh, did, yeah. did Charlie, like, kind of take you under his wing and, like, show you around, show you about music, or did you learn, like, um, through YouTube or what? Yeah, like, definitely, like, like in the very, like, early stages, like, the first, like, few weeks, maybe a couple months, like, yeah, like, you know, he for sure, like, would come over and, like, show me, you know, like, the ropes. But then, like, I was really big on just, like, figuring out how to do it myself as well, you know? Because mm-hmm. I, I just really wanted to, like... You know, like things like that, you know, like when you shadow people, you could tend to like, you know, copy them maybe a little too much. And I, I really wanted to just learn on my own, you know, like stand on my own two feet and like, and really, you know, like really just be proud, proud of something that like I'm, I'm figuring out on my own. So yeah. especially around that time when you're just out of high school, like you want to feel like you're actually good at something, right? So yeah, no lie, yeah. bro. That that's actually uh true. Yeah, you want to feel like you're you're doing something, like you're good at something. Yeah. You know, all my friends, like they were going to school, playing sports, you know. So like, I was like, yo, like I gotta do something that just adds up to being great. You know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's like definitely a good feeling when when you can do that. But um, well, let's talk about the Florida scene then. So once you got to Florida, um, when was it that you actually like? Who are some of the first artists that you work with? Yo, to be honest, bro, like when I first got to Florida, like the first artist that I ever worked with, his name was, his name is Jordan Hollywood. Okay. I've never heard yeah, of Jordan he's, Hollywood. Yeah, he, he's from like, I think like the Davy area and he's signed to QC right now. Oh, okay. What the heck? Yeah. yeah he's, he's like a super talented artist. You know, I still, I still rock with him to this day, mm. but that was like, honestly the first artist, but the first like popping artist, like the first, like, you know, the first like popping popping artist was Denzel Curry, you know. Yeah. Mm. How did so, you meet, yeah. you meet Denzel Curry? Um, I met Denzel Curry through a mutual friend um, that I was going to the art institute with, and he used to just always tell me like, "Yo, um, there's this artist, you know, in, in Carroll City, which is like the hood of Miami." He used to always tell me like, "Yeah, like he's he's like uh, he's he's nasty with it, you know, like he's mm. next up out of Miami. He's like this young kid." At the time, Denzel Perry was like sixteen. No, like, so he was young, just like really popular. Yeah, so young, bro. And like his parents, like his parents was like really strict back then. So I just remember, like you know, we could only pull up at like certain times, or like even like when we really got into it, um, you know, like the whole the whole journey of the music thing. Like, you know, like Denzel would have shows, and like he would have to go home like immediately after. But, like, <laughs> we would like still like party, party, and stay out, you know? Yeah. So, like it was interesting. Yeah, pretty interesting though. It's okay. crazy. Yeah, so, well, did Denzel introduce you to X, or how'd that happen? Um, Denzel, yeah, basically, like, basically, like, I was just staying with Denzel, um, I was staying with Denzel, like, at the time, at his house, and, like, he just, like, he he was just, like, so excited about, like, these two kids, and it was X and Ski, and, like, mm. I just remember him, like, playing the music all the time, and that's really how, like, I found out about them, and then they, they ended up coming over one day, and then, um, Denzel was like having like a little meeting with them about like I guess like just like talking about like future plans and uh I think that was like the same day like me X and Yoshi Yoshi Tompkins my little bro mm. um that was like the same day that, that like, we all like made one song together mm-hmm. what was um, that song was fire. it's called hit hit the dirt oh, okay okay sick yeah. so when I think about Miami right because like I told you I didn't listen to Snoop Dogg but I did listen to like you know that whole Akon Rick Ross um, DJ Khaled era and yeah. in Miami I feel like it used to be the scene where people would rap about like luxury and like women right um, but can you talk about how it felt like to like build a scene that was based on music that's like really aggressive and like out the mud 
And so, you know, me being a part of it, honestly, like, it was all new to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm from New Jersey, so, like, you know, being from New Jersey, it's not super, like, underground, uh, you know. Um, I, like, honestly, I just did, I, I didn't really know much about it. So, like, it was all new to me, but I just really wanted to be in Miami. And those were the guys that I came across and, like, you know, that was, like, their thing. And I just happened to, you know, fit in musically. Mm. And, um, you know, the whole, like, aggressive, dark sound, you know, at the time. So, I mean, it was, you know, it was all, it was all, like, new and fresh to me, you know, to mm. them, for Denzel Perry and, like, the whole, like, Raider plan, like, that was, like, their thing. So, you know, I'm, 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 like, I'm the type of guy, like, I'm open to, like, you know, new things. So, it just worked out. Well, when I think of Ronnie J, right, the first thing that comes into my head is, like, the loud bass, obviously, right? Like, everybody knows what a Ronnie J beat is, but <laughs> this is a super random question, but what do you think of uh, the whole Triller wave? You know what that is? Triller wave? I have no idea. <laughs> well, no, no, just, like, you know what Triller is? Nah. Triller is, like, I 100% know that you've seen this. It's, like, that app where people dance. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, it's, like, TikTok kind of. Yeah, what do you think listen, of that? I know exactly what you're talking about, and I think that's just fire. Like, I, um... I came across that just by, you know, working with 10K, fucking fucking with him. Yeah, so, oh yeah. With the whole day, like, dancing in the world mm -hmm. shit. The world, yeah. But, yeah. Um, but, like, I don't know, bro. Like, I'm not super into, like, technology like that. Like, I like it, but, like, I don't know. Like, when it comes to my iPhone, I'm not really into, like, downloading all these apps. And, like, ah, yeah. so, like, I never really got into it. Um, I like it though, and I do see. I, I guess like my, I guess like my tag is on there a lot. That's what I hear. Always, you know? dude. Yeah. So like, <laughs> that's 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 really dope. You know, like shout out to all the people that you know play my shit on it that has my tag in it. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. Um, but yeah, bro, I, I think I think it's great for for like promotion and for oh yeah for people to get like their music out there. Um, and maybe one day I'll do it. On, uh, <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I because it's funny because I find a lot of new artists through Triller videos, right? There's this one, um, like white kid. He's like short and kind of chubby. I don't know if you've seen it, but he always like does Triller videos to these new Seth. artists. Yeah, Seth, Seth, yeah, yeah, the Seth. Young kid. yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. know, him. I know, him. I know him. It's my little homie. Oh, okay, you know him personally? No, nah, I don't know him personally. Just like from DM, you know? Okay, yeah, because like yeah. when he does a, a Triller video, he can like put on a new artist. So like. In my head, I'm thinking, like, do labels pay this guy to, like, you know? But, like, Bro, at this point, like, yeah, for sure. Like, labels do, for sure, like, pay, you know, influencers like that. Like, people that have, like, a following, you know? Like, that's that's a real thing, but that's just a part of the business, you know? Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Well, yeah. uh, back to X and Ski. So, like, uh, I think the X and Ski mask, like, Ronnie J era was considered underground at one point, obviously, right? Um, but how did it feel for, for that to, like, break through and go mainstream? Mainstream. It felt, it felt, um, it felt like winning a championship, you know, but yeah. like a life, lifelong championship, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because it was something so brand new and fresh to like the world, and we were going so hard that like the world had no choice but to accept it, you know? Because like I'm doing my thing, ex Skeeter doing their thing, and Zell too, and it's like. The amount of plays that like that like that like our songs would get on SoundCloud just overpowered anything mainstream mm -hmm. to where like the labels had to pay attention and they had to fuck with it. They had to start signing and like offering deals yeah. because no matter what, like we would have took over anyway, you know. Mm -hmm. And then what began to happen is like you know, like X, he's so talented, you know what I'm saying? So like he was so diverse, so he you know he he, he was just able to like you know switch the sound and. and and pop shit and like go all the way mainstream which like I know fucked up a lot of people's heads you know what I'm saying but that was just all like in him mm -hmm. you know so I mean you know it's kind of hard like talking about like him like that you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. yeah. but um oh shoot I think your connection bro, bro. like they, you know, I, I, I know he was like gonna do amazing things you know I mean he already did he's still a superstar like even right now you know yeah. what I'm saying so it's like you know to me you know he's the greatest but you lived in Denzel Curry's house with X, with Ski. I think all creatives, right? They just, if you live together, there's like a better chance that you guys will like make uh, better music, you know? Like it's just easier to make music when all of you guys are vibing together. Like, yeah, even, I mean, it's yeah. a vibe, bro. You yeah. just wake up at 5 a.m., 
Yeah. You know, wake up Denzel, whoever, and be like, yo, let's go. Or they can wake me up and we just go, you know? And it was just like, that was the whole point of, of like, really just being, like, you know, all in one place mm -hmm. all the time. You know, I mean, as far as, like, ex, like, living with us, that was kind of like, he got kicked out of his grandma's house or whatever. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, uh, I mean, you know, it, it was just, like, family, you know? Yeah. So, like, it wasn't really... I mean, you know, he was he was really crazy. So like, you know, like I remember like my roommates at the time, they were just like, man, I don't know, but you know, like it just worked out. You know, like we we really care, we really care for him. So mm -hmm. it didn't really matter. Cause like even uh, even YouTubers, like I don't know if you know who Jake Paul is, like they, it's a thing on YouTube where if you you know they create like these houses where they all live together and make content. Like, what was some of like the crazy like the craziest story that you had living with Ski, Denzel X, and like the rest of all those people? I'm not gonna lie, the craziest story, I, I can't even say that on the internet <laughs> time <wanted> to. <laughs> but um Jake Paul, yeah. I know exactly who Jake Paul is. And uh, I was actually in the studio and like, no way. So that's far, yeah. Yeah. Um but yeah, bro, you know, I mean there was so many every every day was was crazy to me, you know, just because like, you know, ex because like, you know, like ski would come around but ski ski didn't live with us, you know. Oh, okay. But um X was so like just random like you never know what to really expect you know but you know he was just such like a, a normal kid too at the same time you know like he would just play a lot of video games and honestly bro like i seen him do other things more than work on music you know but he was so great it was like whenever he was working on a song it, it was always going to be something you know it was never like a start and not finish you know anything started you would finish it Mm -hmm. like right then and there you know what i'm saying like it was just like so like what were some what were some of those other things um about what we mean like you said like he didn't just make music he was so good at all these other things oh yeah yeah i mean he would just play like video games a lot like a lot a lot a lot of video games yeah um and, like just super into like starting the game beating the whole game mm -hmm. and he would just like order mad chinese food all the time <laughs> and like <laughs> not yeah. really want to share it but like he, he would end up sharing it anyway yeah um <laughs> he would always walk to the corner store, just like, just do like regular shit, you know, or like, you know, he, he, he would always like want to play fight too, you know? Yeah. So like, that's what, like his thing, like fighting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is there yeah. someone who uh, didn't blow up in that whole circle that you thought would have uh, blown up? Um, There's a lot of you, right? Yeah. Not really. I think everyone is, everyone is where, you know, they're supposed to be, you know? Yeah. I believe that. You know, like, even now, like, if I was meant to be anywhere else, you know, I would be there. You know, mm -hmm. but, like, I'm on the phone with you. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this FaceTime interview. Yeah. You know, so, like, I think that's how life works. Sick, man. Yeah. Well, just respect because you guys really created, like, an entire era of rap. And I think that will always be remembered. So, um, props to you guys, honestly. But... No, I appreciate that. Yeah. Recently, um, I think everyone has already seen, like, there's uh, there's those videos of Pierre Bourne, Kanye. Um, you're in the video... So was Kanye one of the people that you looked up to as a child? Like, yo, man, I'm never gonna, you know, I'm never gonna meet this guy. Like, I'm never gonna work with him. I can't really say, you know, always looked up to him. You know, I, I can't say that. Yeah. Like I said, bro, like, hey, maybe this is like weird or different, but I just always wanted to just be different. You know, I always wanted to just stand out and be known for me. Mm -hmm. But inspired, yeah, like, I, I think I was inspired by Kanye, you know, early on, like, you know, his music, his fashion, uh, for sure. Like, you know, him going from, from producer to artist to now just like yeah. artist, you know, like just rock star, like, you know what I'm saying? Like legendary status. And also even like Pharrell, you know? So oh, yeah. Pharrell, big time. Pharrell too, because, you know, like coming up, I was really into like, um, bait and like BBC. And like, mm -hmm. I used to buy like the fake shit from like the flea <laughs> market. And I just, you like, got to, man, when you're young, sometimes you got to. Yeah, 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 I mean, uh, not not anymore, but... <laughs> when you're young, when you're young, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, exactly, bro, I had to flex up with it, so... Yeah, like, you know, I, I do think that um, Pharrell and Kanye, for sure, like, inspired, like, what I'm doing today. Mm. But I can't really say, like, you know, I had, like, their posters on my wall, and I'm like... Like me? My idol. Like, <laughs> no, 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 but that's fire, though, bro. Yeah. yeah. You have, like, their albums. I mean, like, actual, like, pictures of just them. Like, oh, yeah. You know? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I can see. I have another man's picture in my room every night. <laughs> yeah, but but bro, like at the end of the day, 
that's still cool. You yeah. Know? That's just not what I did. You know, like when I was a kid, I used to draw like Pokemon on my wall. Like, you know what I'm saying? I used to draw things on my wall. Yeah. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was going to comment, you know, on the on the um, album art behind you. I like I like how that's set up. I like that. Thank you, bro. Yeah, I appreciate I like that. that bro. Yeah. yeah, I have this one, um, Yeezus, uh, Take Care, just like Akon's album, just the ones that I think are like the most influential, right? So that's Super fire, bro. Yeah, that's thank dope. you, bro. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah. Well, how exactly did you get in touch with Kanye? Was it your manager? Yeah, it was like my manager at the time. They just like reached out and was like, yo, um, Ye, wants, Ye wants to fly you to Chicago tomorrow. So I was like, that's crazy, let's go. And then um, <laughs> I just ended up going to Chicago. And then once I got there, he was like, yo, I'm going to Columbia tomorrow. Do you want to go? And I'm like, yeah, like definitely. So, yeah. And then from then we just, you know, we like went to like, you know, a few different countries and like worked on music and sometimes we would just go somewhere just to like go look at art and not even work on music like okay. crazy crazy stuff bro yeah when um when you first like met him right um did he tell you how we found out about you like usually that's what happens right artists are like yo man i found you on this person's song like so like did he tell you how we found out about you um it wasn't it wasn't really all like that you know kanye is a very different type of person okay you know i'll tell you things it's like he's like a very like sporadic type of person. So it's not like he seen me and was like, yeah, I, I found out about you from this. Like, you know, it was just like more like just like in the moment, you know. Okay. Um, but he definitely was aware of like, you know, the work I've done with X oh, and okay. stuff like that. So did, yeah. did, did he tell you like any like specific song that he liked or, or like? Nah, no, no. Nah. Okay. Kanye's a very different person, bro. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can only imagine, man. I, yeah. I actually, um, speaking on that, I actually interviewed this guy named Anthony Kilhoffer. I don't know if you know that is. No, nah, who's that? Anthony Kilhoffer is like Kanye's like really close engineer, and he's worked with him since like college dropout to so, like stuff he's doing now. Um, is he still? I, I don't. He's pretty old. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe I met him honestly. Bro. Yeah, maybe. But, um, yeah, yeah, I so, don't know. Really about him. Yeah, so I worked. Um, I mean, I did an interview with him, and then he was like speaking on. Uh, he's like Kanye makes a lot of impulsive decisions, <laughs> right? But then he's like. For the majority of the time, they work out in his favor. You know, like something great comes out of it. Um, did that ever happen to you when you were working with Kanye? Where like he made, he was like, you guys are doing something, and then he's like, yo, we gotta scrap this. Let's do something else. Yeah, like he does that a lot. You know, um, but I think that's what makes Kanye Kanye. You know, and to be honest, like I'm inspired by that as well. You know, but like that's just like his workflow, and that's just who he is as a person, even beyond even even beyond music. You know, so it's like. You know, I think, I don't know if he's always been like that, but that's just who, you know, that, that's just basically what his journey has made him become, you know, that type of guy. And to be honest, he, he can be that guy, like, you know, because he's worked, he's worked hard enough to, to financially be able to support anything he wants to do. Yeah. <laughs> like any creation. So like, you know, like, you know, I don't think it's wrong being that type of person. I think, I think it's great. I think it's free. I think that's what life is all about. Like, literally just, like, becoming successful and then creating your own world. And, like, you know, like, that's what I'm on a journey to do as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, now that you just said that, right, that, you know, that he makes impulsive decisions sometimes. And then you talked about how X was, like, always doing crazy stuff. Um, I, I saw in an interview that you actually like producing and making music in, like, peaceful, like, areas, right? So, like... Like, are there any similarities between the way X, like, was so crazy doing all the stuff in the house and then, like, Kanye making these decisions? Like, are there any, like, similarities between that, do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, you know, it's definitely, like, yeah, I, I think, I think, I think, you know, they, they both, like, share things, you know, like, personality traits and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I can't, like, compare X and I can't compare Kanye, like, you know? Too great. They're both, like, just, like, great people mm -hmm. and like just great you know artists and you know so I, I don't i'm not gonna lie i never thought about that <laughs> but, <laughs> Until um, now. Yeah. but you know it's a certain vibe you know that, that they share that i think you know it's cool you know if anything kanye was just really like intrigued and like really just like inspired by x which i thought was really really dope yeah so cool. um what was uh africa like because like as a producer right do you find it like useful to actually go to a completely different country and then make music there? Useful, yeah. Um, inspiring for sure. Um, like, do you pull from different things like the culture or whatnot? 
you have to, you know, otherwise it's pointless, you know. Mm-hmm. You got to be really present, you know, wherever you're at, even if you don't go to another country. But I think it's best to be present because then you could just, yeah, cool things and, like, come up with new things. Like, for example, like, um, he had different studios set up, like, outside, like, under, like, these little villa things, you know. And there was times when, like, we would record vocals or, like, record certain things and, like, we would get, like, the nature sounds in it as well. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, you can't, you can't, um, you know, you actually gotta be there, be present for that to be like really authentic. You know, you could you could YouTube some like you know, some like I don't know, ape sounds or monkey sounds or some bird sounds, but like to actually be there on 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 the Nile River, mm. you know, it's like you know, it's like not everyone gets a chance to do that. So I think it is best to like utilize that and take advantage of like where you are in the moment. Yeah, you went to the Nile River. I mean, yeah, so, like, we were staying in uh, Uganda at this resort that was, like, literally on the Nile River, which was cool because, wow. you know, I would always hear about that, like, in history class and, like, you know, growing up. Like, you too, yeah. right? So, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, that's good. that is crazy. Well, um, you, um, you know, one thing I actually wanted to ask you, because, like, you were just so close with him, I feel like generational talent, right? I have it all on my wall, you know? I think there's Drake, there's your Kanye, you got your Travis Scott, you got your Kendricks. Something called generational talent is like something that you just don't get too often, right? I felt like X was generational talent of my era, like my high school era, you know what I'm saying? Now that yeah, X is here, agree. yeah, do you think that, I think he was the closest thing to a superstar. Do you think there's someone right now that's like, you know, kind of on that level or no? Someone really um, young. I think, I think X for sure is a superstar. He just, you know, he never, he never left the country. Um, oh yeah, too. But yeah, Lil Pump for sure is the biggest superstar in the world right now, which is also my bro. So it's lit. True. It's I like, think <laughs> I would yeah, I would like, I would say Lil Pump or Deuce World. Yeah, no, nah, Pump can go anywhere and it's like it's going up, you know? Yeah, true. Yeah, um, you know, Pump for sure is the biggest, period. Yeah, good like, point. Good point. What are um uh what are your thoughts on uh leaks? Because it seems like everybody is like trying to leak your music, you know? It's always like Yo, this new X snippet, this new ski snippet, um, Kanye, whatever. Like, what do you? Is it is it frustrating when your music gets leaked? Um, certain things I feel like you've got to learn to just like accept it. You know, you can't you can't control everything. Mm-hmm. And like you know where we are today, the technology, every you know, you kind of got to make music and just like you have to kind of you gotta always just be prepared to hear a leak somewhere. You know, at the end of the day, if people are leaking, if people are leaking your music, that that means that you know. It's dope. <laughs> that, that like they actually want it, you know. That it's like you know it's actually worth something. So yeah. Um, although you know it may be annoying, but sometimes you know there's there's like there's no way around it. So this is. Mm-hmm. If uh if you were in like my position or like you know a high school kid, and your favorite artist was like Travis Scott, like you would also like listen to the leaks and stuff, right? You get it, right? Yeah, for sure, bro. Yeah. I would too. I mean, sometimes I do. <laughs> you know right? what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I'm I'm all with it, bro. I. I I'm not tripping, you know. Um, I mean, obvious, obviously, like if it's like a good enough song, like something I'm really, really proud of, and something that I have like a crazy like rollout plan for, then obviously, you know, I wouldn't want it to leak. But like if it yeah. does, you know, it's like, what am I going to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's interesting that you that you understand both sides, right? But um, I want to ask you uh, uh, like two more things. First thing was like, yo, MGK and uh, Eminem diss track, right? Um, yeah. I'm not too into lyrical rap, but I obviously checked both of those out. Yeah. And it's some my one of my friends told me today, I'm like, yo, I'm interviewing Ronnie J and he's like, dude, you know, he produced both of those songs, right? So yeah. like <laughs> tell me a bit about that, dude. Um, I mean, that was a crazy experience as well. That was like a blessing, you know, because like um Which one did you work on first? I think I for sure worked on the Eminem beats first, you know. Okay. And then, like, shortly after, I met um, MGK. And then, um, I, I don't, like, I, I don't, like, bro, I don't remember who dropped what first. I think it was, like, Eminem and then MGK. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think, you know. Um, but, yeah, bro, it was kind of like, you know, like, my management at the time, I sent beats to them, and they have a close relationship with Eminem. Mm. So they sent the beats to Eminem. Eminem chose two. They both made his album. And then MGK chose two as well, and they both made his last album. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, bro, they just both decided to talk about each other. Like it had nothing <laughs> to do with that. Yeah. And they both just like dropped it, and 
you know, it was cool though because like everybody thought that like I set it up and like it was some type of like that's what I you know like like that door shit, which like you know I always say this, you know, like certain things in life are just meant to happen. Okay, it's destiny, you know. But another thing that I will say is that you know it's so legendary. People need to know that there's no other producer in history that has ever done that. You know, at least to that level, really? that has ever like produced two disc records towards each other. Yeah. So. You're kind of right about that. Yeah. I'll, I'll wait. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, like no one else did it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, did, uh, yeah. Did, did any of them hit you up after that? Like, yo, man, I didn't know you, you produced other guys' diss track. No, nah, it's funny. Like, we never, like, spoke about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. And, uh, and like, I, I actually fuck with, like, MGK. Like, no, nah, like, I don't, I don't think he even cares. He doesn't care, bro. He's such a rock star. Like, he doesn't care. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, it's, good. it's just good for sport in general, though. In general, you know, like, having... That's what I'm saying, yeah, just like, you know, sport, you know, yeah. nobody, I'm not taking it, nobody's taking that shit personally, it's mm-hmm. just fun. Yeah, and like, I wanted to know, you make so much music, that's like the current wave, right? What are your thoughts on just like lyrical rap in general? People who still make lyrical music. Um, I'm not against it, you know, I don't really listen to it, but okay. like, I'm all for it, you know. Um, I'm down to work with, you know, all, all different types of artists. Mm-hmm. Um. You never know what can happen, you know? Mm. That might take over again. Like, you never know. I mean, I doubt it, but mm. you, you just never know. You know, I feel like the more time that goes on, like, the simple, the more simple, like, things get with their music. Like, you can make beats off your iPhone nowadays, you know, on GarageBand. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So sooner or later, like, everybody's going to be making music. You know, like, everybody kind of does. Like, you probably got some some tracks, too, of your own. Like, <laughs> nah, <laughs> like, I mean, nah, I don't. <laughs> I would never. But, um, so, I mean, so yeah, bro, like, yeah. we're just, you know, everything's always, like, evolving, bro. You know, it is what it is. I'm not, I'm not against it, though. Yeah. Also, I can't lie. I did, uh, I did experiment with the autotune app this one time, the T-Pain app. That's about it. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't know about it. Actually, I know about it. I've never tried it, though. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's whack now because you can just find a producer anywhere that'll help you do autotune. But, um, right, uh, right. the way I see lyrical music is, like, I just don't think that lyrical rappers, can like rap over trap beats you know what i'm saying like that's just like no offense to anyone i just like i wouldn't listen to joiner lucas you know but he has his own fan base yeah. i just think that like yeah lyrical rappers can't rap over trap beats what, what do you think about it? you might have a different opinion i don't think that they can you know it's just not what you're used to hearing okay you know what i'm saying i think if a lyrical rapper tries to rap on a trap beat then i, th- I think it's i think it's something new to the ear and i i do think that they should do that you know because that way they'll probably gain even more listeners Mm-hmm. Like a lot of like younger listeners, you know what I'm saying? But you know, to each his own, bro. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, I'm not against it. I think you know, I work, I work with you know a lyrical rapper, you know, again and again and again. I work with a simple rapper, like yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's really just on the vibe, yeah, it's on the vibe. Well, I might be speaking this into existence, but I would like to see you work with Joey Badass. I don't know if like that would ever happen, but I already did, bro. It's my own. Oh, no way. So you have music that's out with Joey Badass. Yeah, you can look it up. Just type in, like, Denzel Go on YouTube. Type in Denzel Curry featuring Joey Badass, produced by Ronnie J. No like, way. I forget the name song, but, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to listen to that know. after this interview. Well, okay. Well, you know, last last question I actually want to ask you, uh, last two ones, is with your music, right? I searched up your name, and, like, everyone's talking about this thing called Jupiter. Is that, like, your next album or something? Yeah, Jupiter is um, my next project that I plan on putting out. I plan on releasing it. Um, somewhere in like September, so yeah, for sure. Okay, so like, you I have so much music of my of my own that like you know it's, it's ready to like you know be released as in like a full body of work, you know. Yeah. What what's inspiring Jupiter right now? What's inspiring? What what's inspired the name? Uh, the name and just the theme of the album. The music. You know? Yeah. Um. So the music doesn't just have one sound, bro. You know, I'm very into like just being diverse as well, and uh, it's like. Bro, I have like all different types of songs, like literally all different types of songs. Um, and what's really inspiring, you know, the whole name and the whole like theme around it is like, I just feel like I've always been like ahead of time, you know, musically and just like, even like just me, period, you know, fashion, you know, as far as like my fashion and, you know, like I said, I'm always just like doing my own thing on my own wave. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I just feel like I'm out of here. Like everything I do is just like out of here, out of here, out of here, ahead of this time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I feel like I feel like I set trend. Yeah. Our our hip hop outlet is called Kids Take Over, right? I'm 19. Um, your music is for the youth, so but I need to know. Um, do you think the kids are taking over? Yeah, for sure, bro. I think it's all about the youth. I think it's all about you know the future. Um, a lot of my fans, like you know, family, like a lot of 
out of my listeners and stuff like that, they're actually like, yeah, like the youth, bro. Like maybe from like 13 up, maybe even younger, bro. I got people that hit me up that are so young. And like, I just love it, you know, because like, I want to at least try to be a, you know, a decent role model for them, mm-hmm. you know, just to let them know that, you know, dreams do come true, you know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I do think it's all about, you know, the future and stuff like that, you know, shout out to the legends and like, you know, all the older guys, you know, I think, um, you know, everybody has to get older one day. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's just, that's just the way it works, you know, and it's always going to be, you know, everything's always going to be evolving. There's always going to be like, you know, you know, babies being born. So like, yeah, it's all about, you know, the kids for sure. Thank you, David. So it's really refreshing to hear that because I started Kids Take Over on the fact that I didn't think there was a lot of like young people in hip hop media. So that's just like the void that I'm trying to fill, but it's refreshing to hear, you know, like your thoughts on the youth. Yeah, for sure, bro. Yeah, well, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And I just want to thank you because you were like one of the, like the chillest people that we've interviewed, to be honest. (laughs) <laughs> no, I appreciate that. Yeah, like we've interviewed artists, producers, managers, whatnot, but like, yeah, I think you were like one of the nicest people. So, yeah, yo, appreciate you so much, man. All right, bro. See ya. So- Yo, thank you for watching that FaceTime interview. I did have a lot of fun doing it just because Ronnie is like one of the originators of that whole Florida sound and I just respected that so much, you know. Um, who knows, maybe next I could interview like DJ Scheme, Wi-Fi's Funeral, or maybe even Ski Mask, right? But um, it's time for the top comment and Alec Manley commented. He said, Baby No Money interviews only problem is the idiot next to him verbally failing to keep up. Obviously, I thought that was super mean, but I did get a good laugh out of it. So I guess that's the top comment. If you enjoyed this, watch the last video we did and subscribe to Kids Take Over.